I brought some insects for you to have a look at, but unfortunately, as you said, I won't be able to let you try them because I would be committing a crime. That is such... That is... Yes. Uh, what, how on earth have we got to the stage yeah. where the government is banning me from what I'm allowed to put in my mouth? Yeah, so basically the insects uh, have been sold in the UK since, uh, you know, but some companies have been trading for decades and then uh, um, Brexit came and overnight on the 1st of January uh, we were notified just by chance um, the industry found out that um, all the progress that had been made in Europe with regards to edible insects had been basically scrapped by the Food Standard Agency and uh, all companies had to uh, apply for this uh, novel food authorization process. So that sounds that sounds extraordinary. Should we have a little look at some of these bugs? Well, well, I mean, I, I heard uh, I, in my in my mind, the idea of Brexit was to make rules more liberal, to move away from these sort of restrictive structures in Europe. And yet, we're getting more restrictive rules here. Should we should we have a look at what, exactly. what we're having, what yeah. we're being restricted so, yeah, so tell, from? Tell us what. So, you've so basically, uh, yeah. instead of taking uh, Brexit as an opportunity opportunity to break away from the red tape of Europe. There, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, they instead have sort of copy-pasted uh, the, the rules mm. and done a bad copy-paste because they have not um, introduced any transitional measures which mm. will ensure business yeah. continuity. That's a so big the, shame. What, what, what are so these? basically what we have here, we have some mealworm fritters, uh, which are onion and mealworms in curry. Um, wow. Quite delicious. You can dip them <laughs> in sauce. And we have some um, mealworm falafels. Now, the funny thing, well, funny, tragic thing is that this fritter requires, according to the Food Standard Agency, a different um, authorization to my falafel. So it, it is, I mean, it's, it's, if, if, if we didn't have it in writing, yeah. and you can, anybody can check on our website, mm. we actually had to uh, lodge a formal complaint with the FSA to find some answers. Wow. Is Because it's the processing method, as mm. well as how much you put into a recipe. Mm. So these are fried, these are oven baked, mm -hmm. different authorization, different tox toxicology, exotoxicology, mm. <laughs> I don't, I don't wow. know, at different metal content. Uh, yeah. So basically, each authorization costs about um, eighty thousand pounds. It's free to apply, but um, you basically have to gather all this scientific data. Yeah. You have to go to Nobel Food Consultant. Yeah. Wow. Can you just uh, tell us? I mean, when people hear about eating bugs, they think, "Oh, that's something hippies do." You know, that's or not. Or I'm a celebrity getting yeah, out or, of here. Or they see it as a bit of a joke, something you know yeah. you, you watch for entertainment on a, on a Saturday night or whatever. Um, but there is, you, you know, according to you, this is actually quite a serious alternative to to meat. And actually, the, you say there's lots of benefits to swapping meat for uh, bugs, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to think that uh, bugs have been eaten uh, for millennia by billions of people across the planet. Uh, so, um, and they have they have nutrition. Um, they have micronutrients, macronutrients, uh, iron. Uh, also, there are studies showing that uh, the chitin, which is the um, substance that makes up the exoskeleton of the mm. insects, uh, has actually got a beneficial. Uh, is, is very beneficial for your microbiome. Oh wow! I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd be comfortable with eating an, an exoskeleton. It sounds crunchy. It's the sort of thing we normally well, rip off. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. notice it's there. But, I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm really annoyed that I'm not allowed to try I, one of those. Really, I'm, I'm genuinely really interested. Don't yeah. they? I, I had some crickets. I think they were like roasted crickets or something. Last it would have been last mm. year, I guess, or the year before that, um, from one of the main supermarkets. Just so they they oh. were at the um, checkout. And I thought I'd try some, and they tasted fine. I quite enjoyed them. So I, yeah. I have no objection at all to eating no, them. I mean, each to their own. What is the tastiest bug that you sell? I, I, I like mealworms. Uh, they're slightly nutty in, um, in taste. Uh, whether the crickets maybe have got more of a prone type of um, into them. Mm. Um, yeah, so they're very versatile. You can, you know, can make... And, do, and lots of different things taste differently. Not all yes. bugs are the same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for example, I don't like uh, silkworms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I like you get all the silk in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so do you a bit sort of lemony cheesy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so do you still have you replaced your meat? I mean, uh, do you eat meat at all? No, we we uh, we're a family. Well, the children have grown up now, but since 2015, our family has only been eating insects. Wow. Really? Yeah. Well, um, I'm sorry, I'm really curious. What's in this box? We've seen what's right, there. What's okay. in this box? So let's put that one away. 
this is this is um, to maybe debunk the the fact that insects are actually disgusting. They are very clean, and uh, this is an example of how we used to uh, grow them in our farm. Um, we don't see much here, but basically uh, a bit of zooming in. Ooh. You see that they. Oh yeah, they're the worms. The, yeah. the bran uh, becomes alive with, with with the worms. Yeah, and um, if you could just tip it. Ever yeah. Oh, we like can see that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so these are not fully grown now. In uh, about two, three weeks, they will uh, become a full size, um, and uh, they ready to be cooked. I mean, the, the very good thing is that up until now, we were um, we were feeding the worms with the local, uh, locally produced uh, vegetable surplus. So basically, it was a sort of a it's very sustainable. Yeah, absolutely yeah. sustainable. Mm. There's lots of uh, food which is uh, produced by local fruit shops. Yeah. Uh, but we're not talking about like waste from restaurants or anything, mm. anything like that. But mm. you know, like outer leaves, cabbages, mm. stuff that is yeah. not uh, good enough for um, uh, for the food bank. Yeah. But it can be converted by these little bugs into very healthy, yeah. and tasty protein. And for those listening, because we, we are on the radio as well, we, we are just looking at... So what, what are these? These what are mealworms. Mealworms. Yellow so mealworms. we're looking at mealworms at the moment. I mean, you know... I, for it's me almost nominative determinism, isn't it? Mealworms. Yeah. Because they've become yeah. a meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a healthy meal. Yeah. So um, when, when we're looking at all of these, why do, why do in our minds we separate bugs from, I don't know, shrimp? Yeah. Or I mean, are they really that different? I mean, there's a spectrum here, isn't there? There's not there's not a clear delineation between types of yeah. animals that we eat. Yeah, there's actually uh, quite a few uh, studies have been done by historians, uh, anthropologists, uh, you name it. So basically, from um, from an anthropologist's point of view, uh, because the the bugs which are in our uh, hemisphere are, are rather small, mm. so our ancestors uh, wouldn't bother going out and gather the insects right. because they couldn't make a meal out of it. Too much effort. But in other continents, you know, bigger bugs, you can actually <laughs> catch one, make a meal out of it. So that's that. There's also, um, there are reports, for example, uh, from the Americas where um, the early explorers uh, would see um, the native eating uh, bugs off the floor. So they were, in their journals, it's actually reported like the savages, you know, mm, eating. Yeah. Uh, so there was this, it was always portrayed as something uh, disgusting. Yeah. So is there any hope for the regulatory system here? When, when what might we be able to have the choice, if we wanted to, to have a little nibble of some of that stuff? Right. So, first of all, we will have to ask the Food Standard Agency, uh, which have been dragging their feet now for over a year, in fact, wow. 13 months. Uh, the first authorization request, people got together, put to, some companies got together, put together the £80,000 needed for... Wow. Uh, even companies which were pre-profit had mm. to kind of chip in, and uh, um, we, we're not part of that uh, authorization. But nevertheless, they have applied in December, and now uh, they've been told that in the meantime their product continues to be unauthorised on the wow. British market. Mm. Uh, some, have, uh, like us, have found that you cannot uh, insure. Um, mm -hmm. So um, liability mm -hmm. insurance are out, out of the window. We can't yeah. insure our products anymore. So well, we really hope that, you know, the Food Standard Agency comes mm. to their sense. Well, be best of luck to yes, you, because, of course, so much. anything that doesn't kill you, I think you should be allowed to have, really. I mean, well, I I maybe, mean, maybe we should start a GB you? News campaign, free the bugs. I'm not sure how... <laughs> we, we have one, actually. We have, a, we have hashtag bring back crickets. Hashtag <laughs> bring back crickets. You, you heard it here.